Welcome to another edition of Coach's Corner. Today we look at heart rate differences on the bike versus the run, high intensity versus aerobic, training for sprint triathlon, and the ever-present stomach issues during a triathlon. First up, question from Zane Gertzlauer. He says, why is it that when I run, I can hold a steady heart rate of 180 beats per minute without slowing, but when I ride, I can only hold 160 beats per minute. Thanks for the question, Zane. It's a good one. And the reason why your heart rate is so much higher on the run than the bike is simply that you're using more muscles. On the bike, you're sitting stable. You're only rarely using your major muscles in your legs, your whole upper body, your core, and your arms is not really being used very much. So your heart rate is definitely gonna be lower at all times. It's not really a problem and you shouldn't try and maintain the same heart rate zones on the bike and the run. In fact, your heart rate zones for bike and run are pretty much two separate things. So you need to do a threshold test or a maximal test to find your heart rate zones for the bike, similar to what you would do to find your heart rate zones on the run they're not going to be the same zones. It's probably also a good time to point out that your heart rate is your heart rate. It's only relevant to you and is only relevant to your normal numbers or what you normally sustain. Your heart rate is not some perfect number that everybody should be maintaining. You need to get to 180 or you need to hold 160. Your heart rate is very specific. Myself, I have a very low heart rate. I can't get to 180 no matter what I do, no matter how fast I run. Uh, many other people will run their steady runs at 180. So your heart rate is yours and your heart rate for the run is your heart rate zones for the run and your heart rate zones for the bike are your heart rate zones for the bike. Make sure you stick to the right ones on the right day. Don't overcook the bike to try and keep to run heart rate zones. Eric Perry sent us the next question and he says, hashtag GTN Coaches Corner. If racing all sprint races in a season, how much focus should be done on long swim, bike and run workouts? Or would majority high intensity be more beneficial? Good question. Triathlon is aerobic. Pretty much all triathlon is aerobic. Even a sprint distance is gonna take roughly an hour for the elites and even longer for anyone else. Uh, and that's aerobic. You may touch your anaerobic threshold. You may even sprint a little bit here and there or as you come out the water or through transition. But for the most part, it's aerobic. Now, your long slow sessions build your aerobic engine. Even if you're gonna race at a higher intensity, they, if you do your training at a lower intensity, you build that aerobic engine without very much risk of injury or muscle damage. So it's still worthwhile doing lower intensity training even if your race is gonna be higher intensity. Long, slow stuff increases your efficiency, improves your fuel usage and storage, it improves your capillary density through the muscles, and it even improves your lung function. So spend most of your time doing long, slow stuff with a little bit of high intensity stuff thrown in. At the elite level, the really top guys who are training for sprint distances will only do about 20% of their training at really high intensities, anything race pace or above. So if you're doing anything longer than that or you're not at the elite level, you can decrease that number even more and do maybe 15%, maybe even 10% at a high intensity, focusing mostly on aerobic. Shane McLaughlin asks, I often have stomach issues during a triathlon or after. Just did a half Ironman and suffering a bit with heartburn. Any tips? Well, Shane, if it's only after your triathlon, that's probably good news. Most people would love to have that. Uh, take some antacids, avoid sugary, spicy foods for a little while, and you'll be fine. If it's affecting your performance though, which it is for a lot of people, let's face it, stomach issues are very, very common complaint in triathlon, then you need to look at a solution. Unfortunately, Triathlon is a long day. You have to take in some fuel. You can't just cut everything out and drink water. Uh, and when you take in sugary fuels uh, on a stomach that's got very reduced blood flow because you're working so hard, it's a recipe for acid. An acid in the stomach is a recipe for an upset stomach. So you need to look at something that's going to improve that or alleviate that. Initially, try alternating water with whatever fuel source you're using. Uh, you can also try changing your gels or changing your fuel source to something that doesn't is less sugary perhaps or doesn't produce as much acid. Uh, or you can actually look at some over-the-counter antacids 
before and during your race uh, that can help alleviate that stomach acid and hopefully alleviate the stomach upsets. One more thing I will say on this, uh, one thing that does upset stomachs and people love to use it on race day without really thinking it through is caffeine. Caffeine is harsh on your stomach. It can cause stomach cramps and it can really increase the acidity in your stomach. So be careful with how much caffeine you take in and when you take in that caffeine because you don't want an upset stomach on the run no amount of caffeine and the performance it brings is going to make up for a few toilet stops on your run. And our final question for today, Daniel Else from South Africa writes, question, with lockdown in South Africa, I can't get to a pool to swim, doing a sprint race for now, would gym work help me be okay in a 500 meter swim? Well, similar problems the world over at the moment, I'm afraid. Uh, it is very difficult to maintain your swimming without swimming. Uh, you can, however, simulate swimming. You can use the muscles, train the muscles to a certain degree uh, using stretch cords, using dry land exercises, uh, and various other techniques, which we've actually covered in some of our videos. Uh, ideally, you want to replicate your swimming position, similar position, so horizontal line using your stretch cords in a, in a horizontal position, etc. I'm actually gonna leave it there and bounce you to our videos. We've actually got a two-part video on how to train for swimming at home, which we made during lockdown. And I think that one's gonna help you quite a lot, Daniel. Thanks for watching today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe and tune in next week for another edition of Coach's Corner.